The movie opens in the year 2079 in Washington, D.C., where a CIA operative, Snow is being interrogated by Secret Service Director, Scott Langrall. The director wants to know what happened to Colonel Frank the previous night in a room. However, Snow keeps on replying in a joking manner, which earns him several punches from an officer. After enduring several blows, Snow finally divulges the events of the prior evening. As he narrates, we are taken to a flashback. Snow is currently in the middle of a fight with an unknown assailant. Their fierce brawl continues until Snow grabs a pistol and shoots the attacker to death. Moments later, he receives a distress call from his friend, Mace, who informs him that he has been double-crossed and urges him to leave the place immediately. Snow still takes some time to talk to the dying colonel, who asks him to safeguard a briefcase and a lighter. After the colonel passes away, Snow grabs the briefcase and makes his way out. Soon after, he's ambushed by an armed police force, who starts firing towards him. In a desperate bid to escape, Snow makes it to the roof but to his dismay, he's caught by a fighter helicopter. Left with no other choice, he jumps off the building, causing him to hit another building's window and land straight to the ground. Despite sustaining some minor injuries, he continues to run away from the pursuing police force. Shortly after, he comes across a motorcycle, which he steals. He rides on the highway at full speed and simultaneously calls Mace, asking him to meet in the subway station. Snow eventually manages to make it to the subway, after which he starts running towards a specified platform. Upon witnessing that the train is about to leave, he throws the briefcase inside before its door closes. This allows his friend to take it away safely. Seconds later, the police officers capture Snow and take him to the police station. Back in the present, after he finishes his story, Scott accuses him of killing the colonel. When he denies, Scott shows him video footage of Snow shooting the colonel from behind. Our hero claims that the footage is fake but Scott doesn't believe him. A short while later, Snow's friend and fellow agent, Harry Shaw walks in and replaces Scott to carry out the further interrogation. Snow seems to trust him, so he secretly tells him about his acquaintance, Mace, who has the briefcase containing the stolen secrets. Meanwhile, Mace gets off the train and hides the briefcase in one of the station lockers. During this, he forgets the key card, which is soon found by a cop. As the officer calls him out to return it, Mace gets anxious and begins to walk away hurriedly. In the process, he accidentally bumps into a passerby, causing him to drop his gun which goes off on the floor and hurts the cop. This unintended commotion instantly alerts the other officers, who then capture Mace as well. In the next scene, we are introduced to the president's daughter, Emily Warnock, who is in a spaceship flying through orbit, together with her bodyguard, Hawk, and her aide, Catherine. Currently, she is seen talking with the prison warden, Barnes, who offers a quick briefing about their mission. Turns out that the group is on their way to MS-1, a maximum security space penitentiary housing 500 prisoners. Barnes explains that the Mississippi one is the only prison in existence without abuse or riots because they put the prisoners to sleep. However, this is what worries Emily because there are several reports suggesting that keeping prisoners in stasis can cause them to develop mental instability. Upon arrival, they undergo the standard procedure before taking the elevator to the hibernation chamber. During this, Emily asks Barnes if the actual purpose of this prison is to test the effects of deep space exploration on humans. However, the latter responds that he's just an employee and that he doesn't know anything about it. They then come across a large chamber where the prisoners are sleeping in their respective hibernation capsules. The warden seems to have prepared an interview room, but they can't take any weapons inside. Despite this warning, Hawk hides a small firearm under his pants just in case things go south. After a while, Emily is allowed to interview a deranged prisoner, Haida. Sitting on the other side of the glass room, she tries to ask him some questions to analyze his mental stability, but the latter doesn't take it seriously. This annoys Hawk, who then pushes his head against the table, ordering him to answer the question properly. Heidel uses this chance to steal the firearm from the bodyguard's pants and fires at random directions. This causes an explosion that knocks all the guards in the room. Following this, Heidel shoots his chains and frees himself from the captivity. Emily freaks out and tries to run away, but she's sadly shot on her leg. After this, Heidel enters the control room and threatens a scientist to unlock all the capsules. Scared for his life, the scientist complies with his order, but he ends up getting killed anyway. In the aftermath, the prisoners walk out of their capsules and start attacking the guards, ensuing a riot. One of the prisoners is Heidel's elder brother, Alex, who takes the lead of the prisoners' group. Eventually, they start spreading across the facility and capturing everyone hostage. Back in the interview room, Hawk regains his consciousness and immediately sends a warning signal to Scott before being taken away. The ongoing commotion alerts LOPD, Low Orbit Police Department, who then proceeds to inspect the prison ship. Aware of the police's approach, Alex forces another scientist into activating the security system. 
Heidel then presses a big button, which causes the prison ship to fire at the police vessel. On Earth, Harry and Scott inform President Jeff Warnock of what's happening in the Mississippi one. Scott then proposes that they deploy a special force to handle the situation, but Harry asserts that it'll put the hostages' lives in danger. He instead offers an alternate plan, sending one man with a specific order of rescuing the president's daughter. The chosen man is none other than Snow. Our hero initially refuses to go, as the mission is very dangerous. But he changes his mind when he learns that Mace is also on Mississippi 1. In the next scene, Snow, Harry and Scott board a space shuttle and set off for their mission. On their way, Snow is informed about an escape pod on level 5 that'll get them out of the prison ship. He's also handed over with some explosives and a map. After several hours, the trio arrives at LOPD. An officer informs them that Alex has demanded a negotiator. Hearing this, Scott comes up with an idea. Since the prisoners don't know that Emily is the president's daughter, he decides to send one of the LOPD officers as a negotiator and trick them into releasing her. As instructed, the officer enters the prison ship and negotiates to release at least one hostage first. When the bad guys agree, the officer says that the hostage should be a wounded woman, prompting Alex to pick Emily. However, Heidel refuses to let her go, probably because he needs something more from her. The deranged guy then shoots Catherine and tells the officer to take her instead. However, the bullet seems to have hit straight into her chest, leading to her immediate demise. In the midst of this, Snow departs from the LOPD and lands on the prisoner ship, only to be spotted by one of the prisoners. He then relays the information to Alex, claiming all of this to be a setup. Enraged by this betrayal, Alex kills the negotiator and also orders his men to take down the invader. Shortly after, he notices Emily's ID card and learns from her surname that she's the president's daughter. In the meantime, Emily and Hawk are in the elevator, being taken back to the hostage room. Sensing this as an opportunity to escape, Emily grabs a fire extinguisher and sprays it on the prisoner, while Hawk punches him. At the same time, the elevator opens to reveal Snow. Recognizing him as an invader, the prisoner starts attacking him, while Emily and her bodyguard flee the scene. Despite struggling for a while, Snow manages to blow off the prisoner's head with the explosive. Meanwhile, Emily and Hawk hide in a secure room and wait for the rescue team to arrive. However, there's a problem. The oxygen supply is limited. Not long after, Alex and his men track them down in the secure room. The crime boss asks one of his men to bring him an engineer to open the door. An elderly engineer is brought there, but he's so scared that he fails to unlock the door. As a result, Alex mercilessly shoots him down before summoning another engineer. Elsewhere, Harry guides Snow towards Emma's room via secret passages. On the way, he comes across a torsion system, which creates gravity. But before he can jump into it, one of the prisoners spots him and launches an attack. The two then fight while floating in the air. Heidel, who is in the control room, sees this and shoots the computer system, turning off the torsion system. With the gravity now off, the prisoner falls down, while Snow manages to hang onto a rope. When Harry learns of this, he reactivates the torsion system, allowing Snow to climb up. Meanwhile, in the secure room, the oxygen slowly runs out, intensifying the situation. So, Hawk makes a tough decision. He commits the unthinkable so that Emily can have more time. A while later, Snow arrives right on top of the secure room and breaks in by blowing up the shaft lid. By this time, Emily is already lying down unconscious. As he relays this information to the LOPD, a doctor guides him through the reviving procedure, thankfully bringing her back to life. The two then crawl their way out through the shaft just before Alex and his men break in. Harry continues to guide them towards the exit, but their voice is heard by Alex. As a result, he brings in a communication officer and orders him to cut off the radio channel. Now that Snow and Emily have no clue about the way, they take a wrong turn, which causes them to fall through a ceiling to a room. Despite this setback, they reach an infirmary where Snow tends to her leg injury. During this, Emily asks about the other hostages, to which Snow replies that he's here just to save her. The duo then continues in search of the exit room. They soon come across a supplies room where Snow gives her a prisoner's uniform to wear. Furthermore, he cuts her beautiful hair and dyes it to make her look more like a prisoner. In the next scene, Alex is seen talking to Scott, claiming that he's now aware about the president's daughter on board. He then threatens to harm her if they don't fulfill their demands. Upon receiving this news, the president urgently arrives at the LOPD on the other hand, Snow and Emily, who are now disguised, enter the hibernation chamber and walk amidst the other prisoners in search of Mace. They're soon stopped by one of the tattooed prisoners, who asks for a password. They're clearly oblivious, so Snow headbutts the man before fleeing. They run into a compartment where they find Mace and lock the door behind them. Snow hugs his friend, but his happiness is short-lived as Mace is revealed to have suffered from dementia due to stasis. Snow tries asking him about the briefcase, but to no avail. Soon after, the prisoners start drilling the door from outside, so the trio escapes from there. 
At this point of time, the MS-1 starts losing its control and hits the International Space Station. The collision causes a hull breach, separating Mace from the others. Snow asks him to press the panic button, but Mace can't understand. Unfortunately, time runs out and the poor guy is frozen to death. In the aftermath, Snow finally brings Emily to the escape pod, but he discovers that it has only one seat. Realizing that he has been sent here to die, he sends Emily on her way, making a fake promise that he'll follow her in the next pod. However, she allows the pod to launch without her as she still wants to save the hostages. She believes that her father won't authorize any attack until she's on the ship. Just then, Heidel appears on the ship's screen and threatens to kill all the hostages if Emily doesn't reveal her location. Worried, she complies with him, but he kills them anyway. Snow then takes her away and they reach a lab room. There, discover evidence that the prisoners were actually being used illegally as test subjects. Before the duo can plan their next move, they're ambushed by Alex and his men. Snow tries to fight them, but he is shot, causing him to fall into the shaft. Alex then takes Emily back to the control room, where he finds that his impatient brother has killed all the hostages. Now that they have only Emily to negotiate with, Alex contacts the LOPD and threatens the president to kill his daughter if they aren't released. He further allows Emily to talk to her father, but she urges that the space should be blown out as all the hostages have been killed. Despite this, the president refuses to allow a siege. With no other choice, Scott temporarily relieves him of his command, which the Constitution allows when the president prioritizes personal concerns over national security. Following this, Scott gives the green signal for the destruction of Mississippi 1. Meanwhile, Harry contacts Snow, who is revealed to be still alive, thanks to his bulletproof vest. Harry informs him about the extra spacesuits, urging him to don it and get out of the ship right away. In the prisoners' ship, Heidel tries to assert himself on Emily, but he's stopped by Alex. This ensues a fight between the two brothers, which goes back and forth for a while. But in the end, the menacing Heidel manages to stab his brother to death. He then goes after Emily, but Snow arrives just in time to save her. As the LOPD security force is dispatched, Snow and Emily rush towards the spacesuit compartment, with the prisoners chasing them. They somehow manage to enter the compartment and lock the door behind them. Simultaneously, the security force attaches several explosives on the prison ship with a 30 seconds timer. Within this time frame, Snow and Emily don their spacesuits and jump off the ship right before it explodes. After a while of freefall, they fortunately manage to land safely on Earth. In the aftermath, Emily is rescued, while Snow is arrested. A couple of days later, she is seen in the hospital, trying to crack what Mace tried to tell her in his final moment. Sometime later, she realizes that Mace's incoherent rambling was actually a code revealing the location of Frank's briefcase. She uses the code and successfully recovers the briefcase. She also visits the motel room where Frank was killed, in order to figure out what actually happened that fateful day. Upon doing some research, Emily eventually discovers that Snow fired towards an unseen intruder who had his target on the colonel simultaneously. As a result, Scott, who was watching from a neighbor's roof, thought that Snow shot Frank. Emily then takes the briefcase to her father so that he can carry out the necessary action. Several days later, the cops find out that Harry was actually a mole, and he is arrested right away. With the case finally solved, Snow is released and his possessions are returned, including a lighter given to him by Frank before his death. While trying to light up a cigarette, Snow finds a memory card hidden in the lighter, which turns out to be the real content the colonel wanted him to protect. Suddenly, he's approached by Emily, who teases him after finding out his real name, Marion. The movie ends as the pair walks away, expressing their feelings towards each other. If you like this video, you will also like the video, appearing on screen. Click on it to watch. We upload new movies daily, make sure to subscribe, so you don't miss any videos. Consider sharing it with your friends. Show that you care about them. Thank you for watching.